good day, the state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Ashot Julian Bekor, on questions of the Armenians of Western Armenia. Aray Karutsinian calls on the Armenian authorities to refrain from many actions and statements on the recognition of Artsakh as a part of Azerbaijan. U.S. Agency for International Development calls the situation in Artsakh alarming. Public discussions of the problems of Javakh. The Azerbaijani authorities have established a checkpoint on the road to Berzor, thus bearing responsibility for the illegal blockade and failure to comply with court decisions. Minister of Foreign Affairs of Republic of Armenia, the sixth year of an international book festival will be held from May 25 to 27. Ashot Hamayakovich Gulyam Bekor was born on October 6, 1959 in Baku. In 1975, family Gulyans moved to Stepanagert. In 1985 to 1986, academic year Ashot graduated from the secondary school number one. In 1977 to 1979, he served in the ranks of the Soviet Army. In 1985, he created his family. He is the father of three sons, Artur, Hamayak and Bekor. Ashot took part in most of the battles of Artsakh in Askeran, Hadrut, Shahumyan, Verinshen, Buzluch, Manashinda, Malibeklu, Hojalu, Kurkajan, Lisnoi, Kalintak, Shushi, Berdor, Martaket, Kusapat, Magavus, Serhavant, Orta, Gunepai, Drumbon. Gulyan was a gifted person, burned military, innovative, initiative, courageous, decisive, brave, and resourceful. The talent of commander especially showed itself in 1992 during the implementation of military operations in Shushi. The first company headed by Begor entered the Armenian captive city first beginning its liberation. On July 27, 1992, in the Yerevan Republican Hospital, Armenak Abrahamian met Ashot Gulyan, wounded during the fighting in the Martaget region. The battle for the liberation of the Rambon village on August 24, 1992 was the last. This time, the bullet was fatal. He was awarded with Martakan Haj Order, Voske Artiv Order of the First Degree. He was awarded the title of Hero of Artsakh for services to motherland. The deliberate destruction of cultural heritage during and after the war is a crime. History proves that any manifestation of intolerance towards civilizational values belonging to others, the deliberate damage or destruction of cultural and religious heritage must be condemned with a firm determination. Targeting of cultural heritage, especially in time of war, is strictly forbidden by several international conventions. The Hague Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in Time of Armed Conflict of 1954 and 1990 the UNESCO Declaration on the Intentional Destruction of Cultural Heritage of 2003. From Syria to Afghanistan, from Mali to Yemen, we have seen the destruction of the cultural heritage of universal value, which in many cases hasn't been restored. Unfortunately, the assertions and proof of the Armenian side that in no military situation the Baku government, particularly in the territory of Nakhijevan, has been systematically destroying the Armenian historical cultural heritage for many years. The policy of the Azerbaijani authorities of all authoritative international organizations has not received a harsh reaction and evaluation. The number of destroyed monuments is more than 89 medieval churches, 6,840 cross stones and 22,000 tombstones. We remind that the only one who began the litigation against Azerbaijan in this case in the European Court of Human Rights is the president of Western Armenia, Armena Abrahamian. Artsakh wasn't and won't be a part of Azerbaijan because it is the will of our people. President of Artsakh Republic Aray Karutunyan called on Artsakh people not to despair. Welcoming the statement of Artsakh National Assembly voiced by Array Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan, I underline that any statement or document which ignores the sovereignty of the Artsakh Republic, the right of our people to self-determination and the fact of its realization is unacceptable for us. According to Harutunyan, the deported Armenians must demand practical steps from Armenia to guarantee Artsakh try to sell determination and security. I appeal to the Armenian authorities to refrain from any actions and statements on recognition of Artsakh as a part of Azerbaijan, adhering to the obligations undertaken by domestic and international documents. I appeal to the Russian authorities and Russian President Vladimir Putin to ensure the fulfillment of the obligations undertaken by the trilateral statement of the heads of Armenia, Azerbaijan and Russia on November 9, 2020. I call on the people and authorities of Azerbaijan to end the policy of hate 
hatred and genocide towards the native people of Artsakh. To be ready to sincerely accept the principle of equality of peoples, the title and rights of the native Armenian people in relation to Artsakh. The government of Western Armenia once again reminds the indigenous people of Artsakh accepted their right to self-determination in 1991 in accordance with all international norms after which the territory of Artsakh became independent from the USSR. The government and people of Artsakh should demand guarantees for self-determination and security of Artsakh people themselves defending their rights up to and including the right of self-defense. Edin Maki, Assistant Administrator for Europe and Eurasia at U.S. Agency for International Development, called the situation in Artsakh disturbing. As reports are members, this was stated by Maki during the hearings of U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Foreign Affairs. The situation in the Nagorno-Karabakh region continues to be of serious concern. As a result of the blockade of the Berzor Corridor, citizens of Artsakh are denied or have limited access to vital services, medical care and basic goods, introduced the U.S. SAAD Assistant Administrator. On May 23, at 5 o'clock, the Non-Governmental Organization Center for Social Justice held a public discussion on Ahal Kalak on the topic Dominant Views and Voices of Javakhati from Below. The purpose of the meeting was to critically reflect on the prevailing discourses and policies related to Javakhati in recent history, as well as to discuss the social changes that have begun on the ground in recent years. Researchers Ketevane Padze, Anna Tivadze and Alisa Bakradze conducted two studies on the identity of Javakhati. Armenians. Tens of thousands have lost their citizenship without being able to restore it. For this, they have to pass the appropriate exam, spend the appropriate amount of money. The second issue is the land issue. We have 25 sort of land for each of us. The Grant Arzian from the Center for Social Justice pointed out. One of the experts, Katie Epadze, who is also a lecturer at TSU, said that a too narrow approach to citizenship prevails on the part of the central authorities, which is not enough to achieve the goal of full integration of minorities into society. Young people believe that knowing the state language is not enough to perceive citizenship. They want to be able to get higher education, to have more resources to learn the Georgian language, to be able to live in an equal environment. They are very uncomfortable because of the stereotypes that exist about Javakheti Armenians, she commented. According to Kazia Yupadze, the stereotypes concerning Javakheti Armenians are conditioned by the tense years in Georgia and the 90s and the ethnic nationalism emerged against the background of territorial conflicts. The government of Western Armenia has repeatedly addressed the problems of Javakh, which is a historical territory of Western Armenia, being a part of it. Let us remind you that Javakhis are not a national minority in Javakh. They are an indigenous people who have all the rights of an indigenous people, including the right to receive citizenship as natives of Javakh. The nationalism established in Georgia in the 1990s cannot play a decisive role in the fate of Javakhis. According to all international norms, they have the right to restore their right to live in an equal legal environment. The government of Western Armenia is ready to take on the role of an advocate of their rights in the international instances in the event of a complaint from the Javakhati. On May 23, RA Deputy Foreign Minister Vahe Gevorkian delivered a speech at the open debate of the UN Security Council on the agenda item, Protection of Civilians in Armed Conflicts. In his speech, the Deputy Foreign Minister stressed the importance of implementing the Geneva Conventions and their additional protocols fully and without preconditions and underscored the key role of the UN Security Council in guaranteeing the fulfillment of obligations under international humanitarian law, touching upon the blockade of Artsakh and its humanitarian consequences lasting more than six months, Vahe Gevorkian noted, contrary to the legally binding decision of the International Court of Justice, the Azerbaijani authorities established a checkpoint on the road to Berzor, thereby bearing responsibility for the illegal blockade and failure to implement the court decision. The deputy minister also underlined that Azerbaijan constantly impedes the activities aimed at meeting the vital needs of the population affected by the conflict and has failed to guarantee the participation of the UN and its agencies in Artsakh to date. It was stressed that all the illegal actions accompanied by the policy of deepening Armenian phobia and xenophobia reveal the genocidal intentions of the Baku authorities, the ultimate goal of which is the complete ethnic cleansing of the indigenous people of Artsakh. The deputy minister expressed his hope that the UN Security Council, as the primary body responsible for international peace and security, in accordance with its mandate, would continue to be involved in this issue. 
issue, guaranteeing the dignity, security of civilians and fundamental human rights. The 6th Yerevan International Book Festival will be launched with the support of ERA, Minister of Education, Science, Culture and Sports. The festival will be held on May 25-27 to at the National Academic Theatre named after Gabriel Sundukyan. About 40 publishers, booksellers and cultural organizations, more than 50 writers, critics, translators and other specialists from Armenia, Russia, Poland, Italy, Germany and Greece will participate in the festival. During the three days, 25 events will be organized in Armenia, Russian and English. Admission to the event is free. Launched in 2017, the Yerevan International Book Festival is the largest state program in the field of literature and publishing in Armenia. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> Child, she does do me my share, 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 she does do me my share